you for letting me see your film. I really appreciate it. It was fantastic. And I, I read that it started with a play, and then you took a play and you kind of honed it with the playwright and made it your own. So talk a little bit about that. What, what was the playwright doing, and then what uh, did you guys end up putting together with the script? Sure, sure. So um, my co-writer for the movie is a guy called Kieran Harley, who is a, a wonderfully talented uh, playwright from Scotland. And, uh, and I first saw his play Beats at the Bush Theatre in uh, London uh, m m some years ago. And uh, I was completely blown away by his performance, the writing, the story, but also really touched because I felt uh, like it was articulating something that I had experienced very much growing up. And so I stalked Kieran for some time. And uh, I could sense, and I think he could, that we both came from a similar background and uh, understood um, the world in quite similar ways. And so what started from then and, and blossomed into a very uh, strong friendship and lovely kind of like working, writing relationship. You're on lesson Jano. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's a bit of, sometimes, we, I think we pass the baton between being different versions of Jono and Spano um, when we're writing together, but I do think that helps us to uh, come up with uh, humour. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. you, you primarily casted unknown actors in this, I mean, Laura, uh, excuse me, Fraser. Fraser, thank you, yeah. is the only one that really had true experience in this film. I mean, everybody had a little bit of television experience and what have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Was that something that you were consciously doing, and how did you go about casting this cast? Yeah, I really want. I, 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 there's such a um, giant pool of great young Scottish talent that really hasn't broken through yet, and it's it really is awesome. And like uh, it was, the we were spoiled for choice, really. But yeah, I was I, I was quite keen that you know the, the guys that we picked weren't weren't. Um, sort of the known faces that you see in every um, Scottish Scottish movie. I think I think I think these guys are all hopefully, you know, all the cast, not just the two lead boys but the girls that surround them and all the other peripheral characters all have really good, strong careers ahead of them. And they're all very distinct. You know, the, the ensemble I think is very distinct. They, they all bring really uh, unique personal characteristics to, to each of the um, each of the parts. And they're all very funny. Now, now having inexperienced actors, did you did your approach to working with actors change a little bit, or did you kind of always do the same thing that you've always done? Do you like them to stick to the script? Did you let them improv? How did you go about um, directing these actors? I mean, we largely stuck to the script. I, I, I'm I'm very open though to to, um, to if something's not working on set to change it to changing things. And I, I know that Kieran is very generous in that way too. You know, he comes from a kind of like D DIY theater type background where you're workshopping and trying to make the absolute best choices f for your story and the themes of the story that you're telling. Um, but they, they all, all the, all, all the cast brought up a professionalism um, to set that was, uh, they all really cared about get, do it, getting it right. And, 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 the, and the thing for me about, you know, working with actors is that ev we're all different. Yeah. Uh, you know, every person is different. We have different personal strengths, weaknesses, fears, you know, funny bones. And so each, it, it takes a bit of time, I think, through rehearsals to learn what type of direction works for that type of actor. And you have to be quite sensitive to that. I think. My fans uh, of our show would, would like to know that this man here directed the first Black Mirror, mm -hmm. and uh, you come from a television background mostly, so talk about how that experience has helped you transition into feature film, and, and did, it, did it give you something that you probably wouldn't have had it going into this film? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I, did, I directed the final episode of the first, the very first series of Black Mirror before it was this like massive the Netflix. The best one to do, right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, before it was this massive Netflix uh, phenomenon. That, that just keeps on growing and growing and growing. And uh, it was a great training ground for me, and TV's been a great training ground because you learn 
to turn things around, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's a time pressure, there's an intensity to working in television that is a very good uh, skill to have when it comes to making feature films because I think a lot of young independent filmmakers, the reason they struggle to get the first film, their first film to work is that they, they, there's an in, they, they're not quite flexible enough because yeah. filmmaking is always about making compromises. Sure. And one thing TV teaches you is that you know you've got you've got two hours left and fucking three scenes to do to finish the day. You know, yeah. so you're gonna have to work yeah. work something out because yeah. if you don't, you're not getting it, and you know, you're not getting hired again. So you know, so <laughs> yeah. there's a there's a pressure there. And I think having that type of constantly problem solving mindset is uh, key. So that being said, with the pre-production process, did you have a pre-production process for this, or was it kind of because this movie kind of has a DIY kind of aspect to it? Did you did you set up a shot list and put it together, and how did things evolve and change over the time of production? Well, I'm a complete, I'm a mad control freak, so <laughs> I, um, that's that's good. <laughs> I actually storyboard storyboarded the entire film, made an animatic of that storyboard, put the music to it. The whole thing was already pre-visualized before we shot it. The key thing to that to, to that process really is, once you've done all that work, you kind of need to forget about it. Yeah. Because you have to then be just aware of what's in front of you, what's in front of the camera, and being responsive. And, and having all of that previous knowledge of a way the film could be helps you then to make quicker, faster decisions right. and, and shortcuts. And also allows you to cut shit, you know, like people... I think sometimes people, you know, they have these like 230 page scripts and they're like, I have to shoot it all, I have to shoot it all. But, but you know that when you get to the cutting room, you're going to, you know, lose a whole bunch of stuff. And it's far better to use your time effect, effect, effectively doing the stuff that's important for the story than trying to do too much. I think. Were there any happy accidents on set that, that you captured that you thought, okay, i got to put this in there, but even though it wasn't part of your pre-production process? Yeah, there's one. In Scotland, we'd call this an absolute belter. <laughs> but there was one absolute belter when uh, uh, Les, a character, um, a very specific, a, a moment that was perfect, fell on his arse. Royally fell on his arse. And uh, and that's in the movie, and I think uh, I've, I've seen the movie now play in Rotterdam and play at Slam Dance, and each time uh, that moment comes, the audience giggle because he's a character who deserves to fall on his arse. <laughs> what do you love about being an indie filmmaker? What do I love about it? Wow. Um, well, I want to tell stories, and I enjoy telling stories, and... Um, such a hard question. Uh, <laughs> what do I love about it? This week, I've been reminded of what I love about it because we came from the, the Rotterdam Film Festival where I had no idea what to expect from an audience. I was incredibly nervous. You know, it had been months and months since I'd watched the movie. In the first screening at the premiere, there were 600 people there. And when, and when the first person laughed, and then the second person laughed, and then the whole audience began to laugh, that you can't really describe how good that feels. Um, that, that that sounds like quite a sort of egotistical no, <laughs> reason for being an indie filmmaker. You actually filmmaker. answered one of my other questions. Yeah, but you know, like, but you know, combination of being able. To connect with people in that way, but also then hopefully have something meaningful to say that makes them think about their own lives or their own decisions that they make in their lives. You know? nice. there, there is a political undertone in this film, and it reflects a lot of what Scotland was going through at the time. I, I'm wondering, did you guys have a lot of conversations about how, it, whether to tone that down or bring it up in the pre-production process and then maybe even afterwards in the editing, or did you feel like that that was always going to be an integral part of this, and that you had to you had to have this undertone. The politics of the film were absolutely vital. I mean, without uh, that, then you're just making a part a party movie, and I've got, it's important for me 
to tell stories that have something meaningful to say about the world around us. And so, um, uh, hopefully, people, you know, engage with John and Spanner's story and are, are very moved and laugh and cry at their story, but also say, "So, what did all that actually fucking mean at that time?" Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I won't say too much, but uh, there's a political conversation going on in the film that's that's that's. Uh, it's there, bubbling away in the background. Yeah. So what did you learn from making this film that you're going to take with you into the next? I mean, it's hard. Filmmaking's hard. And you just you have to be tenacious, and you have to stick to your guns, and keep fighting, and take your time as well. You know, it, it, some, sometimes you, you try to rush things that you think are ready, and, and, and they're not, and you just need to like sit and think and mull and... Um, Try to get all of the anxiety about what you're doing away from the actual creative process, because actually all of that tension and suffocating the yeah, tenseness really doesn't help to make creative decisions, and certainly not if you're trying to do something that's funny. I think. You know. I know this is probably another question that you hate to be asked because you're going to be asked it about five thousand times today about Stephen. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I, I kind of did. Did he give you any advice going into this process? Did he did he give you something that you're going to take with you that that you will, will always remember? Yeah, I think I was at a tricky point in my career when uh, Stephen. I first met Stephen, and uh, I I was stuck between a sort of money job, soul job decision, and he read the script and told me to follow my heart and my heart absolutely told me, told me to make this movie and, and in some ways, you know, I'd rather be working the, I'd rather spend my life surfing and, and making no money than make films that I don't want to make yeah, or TV yeah. shows that I don't want to make so I think it's important that we all set out with this uh, idea of saying something that matters to us, you know operation noted, registered, stamped, measured, numbered, assessed, authorised, admonished, prevented, forbidden, reformed, corrected, watched, inspected, spied upon, directed, enrolled, indoctrinated, preached at, controlled, checked. In other words, listeners, sisters, brothers, fuck these fucking motherfuckers right to absolute fuck. They want us to get in line, but we won't. They want us to be afraid of each other, but we're not. We are better than this. The only good system is a sound system, and if I can't dance it, it's not my revolution. This is my revolution, listeners. This one. This one. I dearly hope you'll make it yours too. Join us. Wendy! Aye, aye! Yeah. Drink that. Try and keep it together, right? Right.